I really appreciate, uh, yeah, thank you, thanks, thanks for the claps. Uh, I really appreciate uh, being asked to do this. It's a real honor. Um, it's such a nice space. Like, I kind of believe it. Like, a month ago, I was doing a show in a basement, and I had a, a mic from Value Village, and, like, the PA was literally steaming because of the band that went before me, and now, now I get to do it, <laughs> which is absolutely amazing. Um, I'm in high school, so uh, let's talk about it. This one's from the perspective, um, there's this school called Heritage Christian School, and it's a pretty small school, and someone ended up being the only person in their grad class, and I know it's pretty awesome. <laughs> so I decided to write a poem about it from his perspective. It's pretty hard to disappear here. With fresh air in my lungs, I approach each new day as if I'm the new kid in a teen movie. Oh, teacher, don't introduce me in front of the class. Don't make me reveal some fact about where I came from. Don't make me appear unimportant in front of my classmates. It's tiring being both the grad president and the stoner, the loser and the joker, the ped piper to rows upon rows upon rows of me. Like that scene in Being John Malkovich or something. Like I'm trying to become something. Like a basket of roses they would hand out on Valentine's Day. I'm not sure if real high schools do that. I've never had the experience. But from what I've seen on TV, there's only rows upon rows upon rows of disappointed faces. Like an intense illustration done by an angsty cartoonist developing his cult following in his high school's art room, where I don't attend, although I wish to. At the school dance, I reinvented loneliness. Feeling crowded in an empty room, while dancing alone in Nirvana's in bloom, I was absolutely wasted. <laughs> well, actually, I absolutely wasted my time going to the thing. I'm not sure who I thought would show up. <laughs> but maybe my high school experience will be pale compared to the limelight of a crowded office. Instead of being the only one in a classroom filling out binder paper nervously with one set of teacher's eyes looming. When my dad was a teen, he was in the AV club. And while I love the online magazine, I'm sure it'd be worse than what I'm going through. I didn't choose the year I was born, although I choose the years after it. And at least my high school reunion will be me watching Lost in my basement. <laughs> Thanks. Man, thank you, thank you so much. Um, I was hanging out with some people recently that I didn't know too well. And we were just kind of hanging out, doing our thing. And they were like, oh, um, yeah, we're going to dinner. You should come. Uh, and I was like, ah, oh, I'm not sure if I want to. And they're like, come on, we're going to dinner. Like, we don't bite. I was like, whoa, how do you eat dinner? Do you swallow it whole? I was like, is this why you're all going together? Because you need to, like, have some sort of support group? Are you trying to invite me in? Because I chew my food. <laughs> Here's another one. If I just crane my head enough, I can see your car from the window. And if I tilt it just enough, I can see you walking, unlocking, opening. And if I bite my nail just enough, it's easy for me to rip the whole thing off, like I'm peeling an orange or something, my blood matching the juice. And all I'll have is bare skin there. It'll be soft and red, making an outline of the shape of the nail, like a stamp that would be stamped on my skin when I would go skating and hold hands with girls briefly, almost as briefly as if we were just walking and accidentally touched hands. And for that split second, palm in palm we would be. Our stamps knocked together like fiercely knotted braids on a feisty grade sixer's head. Her mom would knot them each morning, and boys would pull on them when she wasn't looking, with the same hands they would have stamped as they went to go skating and hold hands with girls briefly. I only rip my nails off when I'm nervous, when I'm thinking, when I'm looking at you through the window with my head tilted, when I'm thinking of holding hands with you briefly, when I'm thinking of your hair in braids, when I'm thinking of the band braids and craving lemonade, when I'm thinking of the feisty comebacks you would say to the boys pulling your braids. Hey, quit it, maybe you would say in that dumb grade six voice of yours, but secretly loving it. Or maybe you'd be silent, keeping it real, being the bigger woman and everything. I tilt my head back. Your car drove away. Thanks. <laughs> All right, we're doing good for time. Just right. Three, yeah, okay, let's do this. Um, this one's a bit uh, more serious, and by serious, I mean that uh, I only have about three jokes in there, so. 
When she was born, she was made out of paper and glue. Her thoughts written out on notebook paper. Her dad would photocopy the things she thought to show the boys at Brian's house while they watched the game. Her thoughts would be passed around from sofa to sofa, getting stained on by pretzels and beer. His friends would have nothing much to say, instead preferring to stare into the screen. At her dad's work, they analyzed the data, making spreadsheets when they were supposed to be working, taking turns guessing on what she would think next. They became much more involved in the process of her thinking. At first, her thoughts were primal. She thought of food and sleep and nothing else. But it was still interesting to him to be able to read what his daughter thought. She could not speak, yet was speaking to him through the same paper he had drawn in high school to look like he was paying attention. And soon, he became obsessed with these pieces, carrying them around in his wallet to show to strangers, on the bus, at the store, anywhere he could. As soon as she could talk, things became weird. With her dad reading her thoughts, she could not lie. She could not keep anything to herself. Soon this would cause problems, like when he would ask her if she had taken a cookie, and he would have to force every muscle in his body to trust her, eventually sneaking a glance at the piece of paper to find out she had hated the, eaten the whole thing and enjoyed every second of it. In these situations, he felt like he was the one doing something wrong. After the car accident, all that was left was an empty page. There was nothing to photocopy, no words to get stained on by beer, no data to analyze. But he still kept it in his wallet. Thank you. <laughs>